Bitcoin is going to hit about a hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars per Bitcoin by end of 2025 to start of 2026. Okay, so this is the logic on why I believe Bitcoin's price is going to go up and why a lot of people believe Bitcoin's price is going to keep going up. It's called the law of supply and demand. It's a basic economics principle, which means that, that the price of any product or any commodity is dictated by the supply and by the demand. Now, I'll give you an example. If there is a product with very limited supply and a lot of demand, what happens to the price of the product? The price goes up. Now, if a product has low demand and too much supply, the price goes down. Bitcoin, like any other commodity, falls under those same principles. Now, why is Bitcoin's price going to go up? Well, there are two shocks coming into the Bitcoin system. The first one is the supply shock. The upcoming supply shock that I'm referring to is the Bitcoin halving. The Bitcoin halving happens approximately every four years. During the halving, the flow of Bitcoin that's actually mined is cut in half. In the last halving in 2020, the amount of Bitcoins that were mined was cut to 6.25 Bitcoins per block. By the next halving in approximately April or May 2024, the amount of Bitcoins mined is going to be cut to 3.125 Bitcoins per block. That's a supply shock that's going to affect the price. And if you look at it historically, the price of Bitcoin has gone up dramatically, reaching all-time highs between 12 to 18 months after the halving. During the first halving in 2012, the Bitcoin price was at $12. Roughly about 12 months after, the price spiked to $1,200 per Bitcoin. Then on the next halving cycle in July 2016, the Bitcoin price at that time was at $680. And then 18 months later, the price shoots up to $19,400 in December 2017. And then the third halving in May 2020, the price of Bitcoin at that time was at $8,600. Approximately 18 months later in November 2021, Bitcoin reaches a new all-time high at around $67,000 per Bitcoin. Today, Bitcoin's price is at around $25,000 to $26,000. And the halving is happening around April 2024. And I think Bitcoin's price around April 2024 will be around $30,000, $35,000. And 18 months after that, what do you think the price will be based on just the supply shock? Let's also take into consideration the amount of Bitcoins that are actually being sold on the exchanges. If you look at this chart right here, you'll see that in November 2022, there were over 2.2 million Bitcoins on all the exchanges. And after the FTX scandal, people pulled their Bitcoins out of the exchanges, dropping the number of Bitcoins in all the exchanges to only 1.8 million Bitcoins. And look what happened to the price. So if you look at this chart right here, there looks like there's a direct correlation between the amount of Bitcoins in the exchanges and the price of Bitcoin. So you have to add that factor into consideration when you're talking about a supply shock. And if you look at this number, that also means that there's less than 10% of all Bitcoins in circulation that are on the exchanges. There is a huge upcoming demand shock in this Bitcoin cycle. And that's the arrival of all the legacy financial institutions. I'm talking about the biggest asset managers in the world, including Vanguard, BlackRock, Fidelity, just to name a few. And a lot of these asset managers are now talking about Bitcoin and wanting to be able to offer Bitcoin to their clients. I want you to imagine how big these companies are. These are trillion dollar asset managers. BlackRock alone handles about 10 to 12 trillion dollars. And now they're going to be offering Bitcoin to their clients. And how do I know this information? That's because these companies have recently all filed for a Bitcoin ETF, which is a Bitcoin exchange traded fund, which allows institutions and private individuals to be able to hold Bitcoin through their asset managers. And if you look at the date of the applications, the SEC has to be able to give their approval or rejection of these applications within the dates that you're seeing here. And the final deadline that they have to be able to either approve or reject these applications is in March 2024, just a month before the halvening. Uh, so any likelihood na ma-approve itong mga Bitcoin ETFs na to? Well, one indicator that there's a high probability of these ETFs being approved, and I don't think it's a matter of if anymore. Eh. Honestly, I think it's a matter of when. 
because the Supreme Court has recently ruled in favor of Grayscale to be able to convert their Bitcoin trust into an ETF. Now, yes, the SEC has a chance to still appeal that decision, but I can't imagine them winning this case at this point. Now, as you can see, there's a possibility that these ETFs can be approved earlier on and it could come as early as October or January. But knowing how the SEC moves, they're probably going to try to delay it as long as they can. But either way, because when all of these asset managers are able to offer Bitcoin to their clients, you're looking at a tsunami of billions of dollars that are going to flood the Bitcoin market. And with the limited amount of Bitcoins that are actually being traded right now, that there are not enough Bitcoins to be able to satisfy the cravings of Wall Street. And that's why I believe the price of Bitcoin is going to go to at least 150 to 200,000 by end of 2025 to early 2026, roughly 18 months after the next halving. And it is my sincere hope that Filipinos are going to be able to get a chance to be able to buy Bitcoin at these prices before the big asset managers get their hands on Bitcoin. Because you can bet that once they come in, Bitcoin's price will never be in these levels ever again. And just as a reminder, I'm not a financial analyst and nothing I say is considered financial advice. I'm just sharing with you my thoughts on it and my findings and make sure to do your own research. And if you are interested in buying Bitcoin, I'll share with you the links to all the different exchanges and wallets that I use to be able to buy Bitcoin. This is Chris Tan and I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on that notification bell so you're notified of my latest videos. Thanks so much, everyone. I'll see you on the next video.